Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is the House of Law. And in today's video, I would like to share to you some effective legal writing tips. If you are a lawyer whose job is drafting contracts, writing pleadings, or even writing for the courts, I hope you will find this video helpful. Now, if you are not a lawyer, I hope you will find the standards of legal writing discussed in this video reassuring. So let's begin. It is said that it is not enough to know what to say. One must know how to say it. In other words, how you deliver the message is as important as the message itself. Now this finds greatest application among lawyers because lawyers are seen with respect. They are respected for their academic qualifications and their natural tendency to know the answers to almost all, if not all, legal problems. So for a lawyer to be an effective one, he has to know how to deliver the message, to make his readers and to make his audience understand the law as well as the solution that he is proposing. Now let us look at some propositions and uh, tell me if you agree or disagree. First, due to their years of education, lawyers have flawless English. Do you agree? I hear disagreement. Well, you're correct. It's not true that because lawyers have at least eight years in college or tertiary education that they have good English. You know, this is something that all lawyers admit, especially here in the Philippines, because English is not our primary language. That's why lawyers need to constantly improve their English. Lawyers can prepare a perfect pleading or legal document on demand. Do you agree? You don't agree. And you're correct because pleadings must be thoroughly studied and prepared. Pleadings are not like something that you buy from a vending machine. So you must give lawyers enough time to research and to prepare the pleading or the legal document that you are asking from them. Next, a, a legal document is easily understood by laymen. Well, unfortunately, legal documents are some of the most difficult to understand documents on earth. And that is because of the legalese or the legal jargons that are used. So, yeah, we are together in this. We do not agree with the statement. Next, a lawyer should write to express, not to impress. Yes, we all agree with this. A lawyer should do away with using flowery and highfalutin words. Instead, he must focus on expressing himself and making sure that his audience understands what he is saying. In writing, the message is more important than its form. Well, we disagree with this statement because in some cases, especially in court procedure, the form by which the message is delivered is as important as the message itself. Thus, there are specific pleadings for a specific case, and a lawyer should know that. Now, haste makes waste. Yes, we all agree that by rushing things, you end up committing more mistakes and, you know, failures. Now, next, a lawyer should be humble enough to admit his mistakes. And here, we are all in agreement. A lawyer should be humble enough to ask for help in case, you know, he is not sure with his work or in case he needs it to be better and he needs it to be improved. Okay, now, legal writing is a lawyer's essential skill. In the case of Monsod versus Cayetano, the Supreme Court said that the practice of law embraces the preparation of pleadings and other papers incident to actions and special proceedings. In general, all advice to clients and all action taken for them in matters connected with the law have been held to constitute law practice, as do the preparation and drafting of legal instruments, where the work done involves the determination by the trained legal mind of the legal effect of facts and conditions. Clearly, legal writing is as important as substantive skills because lawyers prepare pleadings, papers, documents that contain the application of the law needed in the case or in the problem given. 
Now, also in Ulep versus Legal Clinic, the Supreme Court held that a licensed lawyer at law generally engages in three principal types of professional activity. First, legal advice and instructions to clients to inform them of their rights and obligations. Preparation for clients of documents requiring knowledge of legal principles not possessed by ordinary laymen and appearance for clients before public tribunals which possess power and authority to determine rights of life, liberty, and property. The second activity is preparation of documents. So clearly, a lawyer should be good at legal writing to be able to serve his clients. Now, what is ethical legal writing? The Code of Professional Responsibility for Lawyers provides, among others, the following. First, a lawyer shall not do any falsehood nor consent to the doing of any in court, nor shall he mislead or allow the court to be misled by any artifice. So when writing pleadings or writing demand letters or any legal instrument or document, he must always be truthful. Now, a lawyer shall not knowingly misquote or misrepresent the contents of a paper, the language or argument of opposing counsel, or the text of a decision or authority, or knowingly cite as law a provision already rendered inoperative by repeal or amendment, or assert as a fact that which has not been proved. So, be responsible in citing decisions, and of course, avoid plagiarism. Next, a lawyer shall observe the rules of procedure and shall not misuse them to defeat the ends of justice. Now, while it is true that the rules of procedure are necessary for the effective administration of justice, these rules, particularly with respect to pleadings and uh, steps in uh, the proceedings before the court, should not be abused in order to defeat the interest of justice. Now, a lawyer shall abstain from scandalous, offensive, or menacing language or behavior before the courts. So earlier we said that a lawyer should be responsible and be truthful. Here, a lawyer should also be courteous. A lawyer shall not handle any legal matter without adequate preparation. Now, this simply means that legal writing is not just about getting a pen and paper but also making sure that once you take on that case, once you take on that responsibility, you will deliver it and you will perform it to the best of your ability. Now, a lawyer shall not neglect a legal matter entrusted to him and his negligence in connection therewith shall render him liable. Thus, the consequence of a lawyer who neglects his duty, especially with respect to pleadings and other uh, responsibilities are administrative sanctions. So what is good writing? So these are the four things to remember. First, writing with a purpose. Know why you are writing in the first place. So when you know your purpose, when you know to whom you are writing, then you will have a direction. You have a goal and you follow that goal. Next is writing with form. Now, what is the specific form that you have to follow? If you have the purpose, then the form necessarily follows. So if it's a court pleading, then there are forms available or are like templates to follow. Now, next is writing with appropriateness. So you have to know your audience. Who are you writing for? Are you writing for the courts? Because if you're writing for the courts, you have to be respectful you have to be formal are you writing for a client then maybe you must be writing uh, in a way that you use simple words or that uh, it is uh, in an outline form in order for your client to better understand your position or your recommendation and lastly writing with style a lawyer is also a writer so as a writer try to have a style a style that is unique to you so that uh, it is something that will identify you and of course will make your writing nice and beautiful to read so what are the basic considerations when writing so first who is my audience next do I really need to show my legal education in my writing because if you don't need to state your legal education, meaning to say you don't have to demonstrate your legal education, then write as if you are a non-lawyer. Because believe you me, it is simpler, it is way better to write 
like a non-lawyer. Now, what tone should I use? Should I be aggressive? Should I be friendly? Should I be authoritative? Should I be patronizing? Okay. Now, do I want a response to what I am writing? In other words, when writing, do you need a response? Because if you do, then make the letter or make the memorandum open-ended so that you are inviting the other party or the recipient of your letter or your memorandum to respond to you and share his own thoughts. Now next, how much legalist or technicality should I use? Well, actually, this is related to the second consideration. So, if you are writing a technical legal document, then maybe you should put in just the right amount of legalist or technicality. But if it's not something that requires uh, technical uh, expertise, then write as simple as you can. Is this a template needing revising? Now, with the advent of the copy-paste, a lot of lawyers have used old templates and uh, in the process they have not improved their way of writing and worse, they may use an old template for a different case thus resulting or putting him in trouble. So if it is a template, review the template and check if you need to revise it by changing some terms or maybe rearranging some paragraphs and all that. So next, will the document be negotiated? So in other words, if this is one that will be the beginning or uh, the first of a series of exchanges of documents you know, sent from from the lawyer to the other party's lawyer, then make it something that is a work in progress instead of making it a final document. Okay. Also, remember, do not use or overuse legalese. So avoid legal doublets and triplets. So what are these legal doublets and triplets? So these are some of the legal doublets and triplets. Null and void. Actually, they mean the same thing. You can just use the word void. Also, sell, convey, and transfer. Well, here, the most appropriate word is sell because when you sell something, like a piece of land, you are both conveying and transferring ownership. So, the use of sell would be sufficient. Next, words that exclude non-lawyers. Well, this is just an expression. It only means that by using these expressions or words, they tend to make it a document that is exclusive to lawyers because non-lawyers do not use these words. As a matter of fact, younger generations of lawyers, newer lawyers do not use these words. So these are henceforth, hereafter, hereafter, heretofore, and aforesaid. I mean, they may embellish your document, but they don't really serve any good purpose. So you can just do away with these words. Now also Latin phrases. Now gone are the days when lawyers speak in Latin phrases. So use English expressions instead. So one, some of these Latin phrases which have uh, already come to uh, misuse or lack of use are as follows. Exempli gratia, which means for example, for sure, mutatis mutandis, pro se, and non potoc. Now, legalist in action. I'd like to give you an example, and this one I found just in the internet. So one day in contract law class, the professor asked one of his better students, now, if you were to give someone an orange, how would you go about it? So the student replied, well, here's an orange. The professor was livid. No, no, think like a lawyer. So the student recited, okay, I tell him, I hereby give and convey to you all and singular my estate and interests, rights, claim, title, claim and advantages of and in said orange, together with all its rind, juice, pulp and seeds, and all rights and advantages with full power to bite, cut, freeze, and otherwise eat the same, or Give the same away with and without the pulp, juice, rind, and seeds, anything herein before or herein after, or in any deed or deeds, instruments of whatever nature, or kind whatsoever to the contrary, in any wise notwithstanding. 
whoa that's a mouthful lawyers speak this way when it could have been simply i am giving you an orange that would have sufficed but then lawyers follow a tradition of writing very long statements and contracts and using jargon that only lawyers can understand so see how how sad and how pathetic it is for a student to be to comp to be taught or to be forced to complicate things when there is a simple way to express it or to tell it okay now let's talk about structuring and plotting so first start strong begin with a simple straightforward but compelling statement now how you begin is very important so if your intention is to capture the attention of your reader then start with a startling statement or announcement now if you want to take on the narrative style then start from the beginning how how did all these begin so that's how you start strong okay next tell a compelling story now of course do not you know do not lie in your story as much as possible say it as it is say it how it happened so tell a compelling story a story that captures the attention and the imagination of your reader next use point headings and subheadings to persuade now point headings and subheadings are like signals to your reader so the reader would know what the next paragraphs will be okay and also when a reader wants to go back to what you have written for them they can only check the headings and go to those points that they are most interested in now lastly write a meaningful conclusion so you have to you know complete the story okay you started strong now end stronger all right now as an added bonus i'd like to share to you some tips for making good business agreements or contracts so first get it in writing it is better to have your contracts in writing rather than just mere uh, verbal or oral agreements that way you have evidence of your agreement and you can enforce it in court keep it simple so again make it as simple as possible but not sacrificing the important details next deal with the right person in other words not only are you dealing physically with the right person but also you have to state or indicate in the document the right party or the authorized representative of the right party so state all details and circumstances of the parties to a contract next identify each party correctly so like what i said if a is the uh, seller then he has to be stated as the seller and b is the buyer and he must also be stated as the buyer in the entire contract now spell out all of the details like what i said just because you want it to be simple it doesn't mean you have to sacrifice the details so these details are the details that affect the performance or execution by the parties of their respective obligations okay next specify payment obligations you know contracts without cause or consideration are void contracts so state the causes or the considerations of the parties in the contract agree on circumstances that terminate the contract now the trend now is to provide ways for the parties to terminate and get out of the contract not all problems especially contractual disputes must be brought to the courts next agree on a way to resolve disputes so that's why we have alternative dispute resolution methods so the same can be included in the contract in fact in some industries like the construction industry it is mandatory for the contracts to provide arbitration next pick a state law to govern the contract now this applies when one of the parties or maybe both parties are foreigners or let's say the place of performance of the obligations is another country or maybe the property involved is located in another country so when there is a confluence of national laws 
other than the Philippine law, then the parties can choose what law to govern the contract. And lastly, keep it confidential. So, pursuant to the need to protect trade secrets and uh, personal information of the parties, it is advisable to include a non-disclosure clause in the contract. So, this non-disclosure clause is a standard you know, paragraph that's included and stated almost to the last part of the contract. So, these are the things to remember and uh, steps to take when writing effective contracts. And if you meet these steps, you most probably will not have any problems that require going to courts. Okay, so that's it. And I would like to leave you with a saying from Ernest Hemingway. And he said, There is nothing to writing. All you do is sit down at a typewriter and bleed. So when you start writing, do not stop until you perfect it. There is just no other way to do it. Okay, so that ends my video on effective legal writing tips. I hope you learned something valuable today. Thank you very much for your support. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Again, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell for future and upcoming videos. Again, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.